could you please explain dysautonomia and bradyca bradycardia? I would love to give that a shot. So um, it might be useful since we talk about it all the time, but we don't define it, is to just define dysautonomia. Um, so autonomic sounds a lot like automatic, which is what it is. It's like your automatic nervous system. Another way to think of automatic is reflexive. It happens without your thought. And so dis usually means not working well. So dysautonomia means that part, that automatic reflexive part of the nervous system that controls mostly things related to energy production and management aren't working correctly. So if something would yield bradycardia, which means that your heart rate is going to be lower, it's gonna be slow. Usually slow is somewhere in like, you know, I mean, it's, it's a scale, but it starts getting low once we get towards 60. Once we're in the 50s, that's pretty low. That's, that's getting on the low side. And then if you're in the 40s, that's probably like, we should take note of that level of low because that's really low. And you're, you can start to have some arrhythmia troubles when it starts to get that low. Um, and that can happen. So bradycardia that kicks in pretty heavy like that can, the first thing you think of is sympathetic withdrawal. So corticoreticulospinal system, so from your brain to your brainstem to your spinal cord, is going to control outputs from the top portion of the thoracic cord, and that's going to go to the nerves that go to your heart on each side, like that. So if I get lowered output there, then I may see that the overall charge into the cardiac plexus goes down and we might see more bradycardia. So these are people that um, we talk about like vasovagal or vagal responses where it just looks like that vagal system is super active, but a lot of times it's because we're, we're seeing less of a charge of the sympathetic activity to the heart, um, which will cause that brady, uh, bradycardia to happen. So that's what a lot of people think about is that imbalance at the cardiac plexus. And a lot of times with bradycardia, people will start to tinker with having um, arrhythmias. So AFib, supraventricular tachycardia. Sometimes you'll see this waffle back and forth, not often. Um, or preatrial contractions or preventricular contractions, PACs, PVCs. Um, so that's where to start is, is thinking about that output to the heart if it's, if it's enough. Um, or if we're having sinus or sinoatrial node problems, so the SA node of the heart, if you have like six sinus syndrome, sometimes that can start to cause problems where the overall level of the cardiac output can go down as well. Nelly says, can the tachycardia or vascular constriction create a transient, so it comes and goes, audible or palpable murmur? Yeah, so that goes a lot with what we talked about earlier. And I think what you're talking about here, I don't know if you're saying maybe murmur or maybe palpitation, if, if you're saying it's an audible one, or if you murmur, you're hearing like a valve change, you're, you're listening to it through the stethoscope. Um, that would be my follow-up question there. But if you were saying like, is it more like a palpitation where you could hear it or feel it? Certainly can. That's like we talked about before with um, changes in cardiac output, changes in vascular uh, constriction or size leading to turbulence within the system and that's that's oftentimes what we feel as a palpitation as far as a murmur goes murmurs are typically more related to valvular systems where there you have the kind of the four main valves you know you have valves in your heart and sometimes those valves can have anomalies in them that can cause different heart sounds when they when they close they can be stiff when they causes causes a turbulence or they can be um, damaged in a way where they cause regurgitation and those things are really helpful. Uh, cardiac echoes are super useful for that. And um, so if that's what you're noticing, that might be worth checking out. Okay, sometimes when people turn their head, they say it feels like something in their neck compresses or crunches. They feel a surge of electricity. What could be causing that? Writ large, and I like the way you frame that question, not medical advice, but um, when you feel that like surge of electricity, a lot of times we're thinking about what is called a Laramite sign, like French word, Laramite. And what Laramite noticed was that when you, his is specific to the spinal cord, right? But when you kind of compress or touch off a nerve, you can have an electrical sensation that travels down, whether your spinal cord going to the nerves or within the nerves themselves. Sometimes People will have that like in their arm where it kind of rolls over the nerve and you'll feel it zing down 
uh, your hand or feel like a funny bone or feel like electricity. So you're, what you're looking for is if you're feeling that crunch or rolling over that happens and it zings you, then there's a likelihood that we're rolling over the nerve in that place. And then we want to think about, well, what nerve is it? What sort of things would potentially roll over it? How do we work on, uh, on solving for that?